about Form 34A. Is it Form 34A or 34B that actually all attention should be on at the bombers of Kenya? Because 34A comes from the polling stations. 34B comes from the constituency. So it's yeah, the, 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 here's the thing that the 30, both forms are important uh, because the okay, information, yeah, the information, right the information generated in 34B comes from 34A and then moves to 34C, which is what is declared. I think the point, and it's a point we keep making here, is that what is the forum for interrogating 34A? The, what is the forum for interrogating 34A? It is definitely not here. And by the way, let me also emphasize this. There's a lot that's been made out about the hacking. And, you know, here is the reality. Even if one was to accept that there was hacking, let's assume there was. It actually doesn't matter. Now, people might say I'm saying because the basis of the, of the declaration of the results is not going to be that information that was being streamed. It is going to be the Form 34B, which will come physically ah, yeah. to the commission. Which we, Loba now says they have what? Yeah, which means that even if, even if you go... So it is actually possible, theoretically, to have a different result, theoretically, in the portal, but it doesn't matter. Because if today the Form uh, 34Bs were counted and they allocated X, the certain number of votes, whatever the portal said, this is the result that would matter. If there is a problem with those forms... Again, the forum for resolving that problem is not in BOMAS. So the earlier we finalize the BOMAS process and the move better. on to the next process, the better. Because if we stay here pretending we are resolving a problem, which, which we have not. no jurisdiction or capacity to reform, and don't forget that we are the ones who went to court and said that we, do not, we don't trust IDC. IDC. Why are we now trusting them? Because we didn't trust them. In fact, we didn't want them touching our forms. We wanted this thing resolved in the constituency. What I was expecting any of these candidates to be saying is that we have received 290, but these forms mm. have a defect. So please announce quickly so we go to the Supreme Court. Yeah. You know, okay. So, so, so it, it's a very simple, we are acting like it's a very complex issue. It's actually pretty, pretty elementary. It is just a, a, a mistake we made. Okay. I think, let me, let me, let me uh, stop by saying this. Yeah. At the end of the day, the, an election is a legal process, it's a political process, it's a social process, and it's important for everybody to play their role. IBC should play the legal role okay. and leave it there. That's a good place to yeah. end it. Prof, you get to get your final words just for this segment because we need to create time for Zubaida, then we'll come back again. Now, as far as I'm concerned, as I said earlier, going forward and forwards and backwards tends to muddy the, the clarity of the process. You know, I'm a big believer in this thing you call mental segregation, physical segregation, intellectual segregation, elect electronic segregation. The things must be isolated for clarity to emerge. For example, Waiganjo has just summarized. It is the returns from the constituency that they are supposed to check the forms. Once they have a, a, a figure, that's what is supposed to be announced. Mm. Now, at the moment, it's like we are stuck in clay soil. We are moving forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. You see, I said very early, and this is a, a major problem even in our national body politic, a blood image seems to be the one people like to play around with. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants, mm -hmm. you see, if you look at my palm, Nobody wants to play this way or this way. They all want to play this way. You know, as a result, we have sustainable confusion. And, and this is basically... Which we need to clear. This needs to be cleared. That's what I'm You get the final word, my dear. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. I, I, I hope that uh, IBC, as soon as that is practical, and I believe uh, their lawyer should be up to the job, are just going to say it is time, like the professor is saying, we stop playing in the gray area, mm. let us do the job, have a copy of the decision as you read these results, and say, this is what the court said our job is, finalize with it. If you have not received the two that you've not received, even if now it requires a helicopter to go and bring <laughs> we'll them, go pick, we'll just go, go send pick them and, and, pick. and do the maths. <laughs> and it's a simple math. We, we close this chapter so that we can go Once, to the next so the phase can move of the elections. But Basically. otherwise, the mm -hmm. problem that, mm -hmm. as, as I see it, huh, you remember, I, I remember I was in one of the studios, probably KTN, 
during the 2007. And at that time, there was a big argument. It was uh, when Kibaki, whether Kibaki was going to be to, to be sworn in, and the argument revolved around what would have, what would, would happen if by tomorrow the president uh, elect is not sworn in because of this uh, conflict. Thank, Thank God, and for good or for bad, uh, an announcement was made. Now here, if we open up a Pandora's box, these seven days is not forever, because. Truth of God is, you will never be able to resolve any possible argument about the 40,000 from 34 A's. So instead of getting into an exercise that will not finish, mm -hmm. or at least in a conclusive manner, just stop the circus, do your job. Your and job go. is written in 34 B. Okay. Do the simple arithmetic mm -hmm. and close the chapter. Daisy, you get the final word. Now, Kibe has closed the chapter for me because that is uh, what I wanted to say. <laughs> no, seriously. That, that is so unlike that, Daisy. That, that, no, he has closed the chapter for me because really, mm -hmm. we need closure. And as Kamoto has said, IBC cannot do anything other than declare. There is nothing that is going to happen more. There is nothing that can be altered at Bomas. There is nothing. So instead of dragging this out, because there is a false expectation that is being created. Mm. Every time we have, uh, you know, the, the NASA, you know, calling upon some kind of delay, there is an expectation and a glimmer of hope that things will change. Whereas from what we are seeing, it is clear nothing is going to change. Okay. Very little if anything, is going to change. Therefore, we must move to the next step. And this is, it is difficult. It's difficult enough, you know, to, to have a, a, a process that does not give you your desired outcome. Okay. You know, for, for very many people. But at some point, you are just going to have to come to the end of the process. Can IBC please stop putting us on tenterhooks? Make the declaration. Let's move on to the next phase. Okay. That, that's really it. That's we, the only way we, to that's, this. That's the only let way. the country move we, on. Let the country move on. You know, there's a sense, you, even the, the presence of all these people there is creating a sense of expectation. <laughs> an expectation that yeah. an announcement must be made. And you know, you can't have two declarations. <sighs> only one person is going to be declared. Only one declaration will be made. All right. So can that declaration be made? They let us know what it is. Already. Whether it is to confirm what people know, or maybe to, you know, uh, upset <laughs> people. But at the end of the day, we will then we move have to on do to this. the next chapter. Okay. And we must walk into that chapter bravely as a country, because at the end of the day, in any contest, there are winners and, the and there are losers. Yes, you know? And so we need to be mature enough and, and move on soberly. The law provides for every avenue of redress, even where you are not satisfied. Okay. The law provides for avenues. Mm, that's a good place to end it. The law provides for avenues. Daisy Amdani, Kamodo Waiganjo, Kibem Wigai, and Professor Tumbo people, thank you so much for your time. I'm hoping you can stay with me because clearly we seem to have a very long road ahead of us. Apparently, before I let you go, I'd like to pick your minds again on, on something else that uh, the prof alluded to. Um, there is a lot of expectation in the country. Um, clearly, from the numbers that we have been seeing, the president at 8 million, Raila Odinga at 6 million. And then, like we all in agreement, IBC should be making this announcement any time from now. Then how do you manage the expectation of the people who will... Essentially, how do you bring the country together? Be it the president, be it um, the several leaders who took part in this particular election. Prof, let me begin with you. How do you now bring this country together, even after that announcement is made, whoever it is that gets to win this thing? If I were the president, I would say, let us turn to each other and say, is the pit we got into this mess, but we are glad we have cleared it. From here now, let us start talking to each other, all right, with the feeling that there are injuries, but they can be treated. So basically, this lies at the feet of the president. Yes. Okay. Because Keep for it. me, yeah. for me, the president, whoever is declared president, has no choice other than pursue that path. He doesn't have a choice. He must pursue the path of reconciliation. He must pursue the path of forgiveness. He must, you see, he must emphasize the fact that 
even if there were mistakes made, this thing could not have been perfectly executed. And each of these processes has got its downs. And for the time being, this is where we are, all right? And this is what we have produced. Let us nurse the baby. Kive. Two things. Number one, at the political level, that is at the level of the political class, the, the, major, the main contest on again about the government of uh, Ruto and Uhuru during their first term was that it was not inclusive enough. Yes. And I've always part in their defense said that the job of ensuring that you have an inclusive government is partly by the people of Kenya. If government is, uh, if, the, if my support comes largely from a very small area, they are likely to hold me hostage almost to get everything from government. So that a bit of a, a lack of a exclusion was always bound to be the case in the first government of President Uhuru Kenyatta. But now, the results that have come out appears to show that he has broad-based support I across know, the country. Yeah, yeah. Now, because of this broad-based support that he has received ac across the country, the people have played their part that we all can now be able to form a broad-based government. And that, I believe, would help in national healing. Mm -hmm. That is now in the constitutions of the government after he's been sworn in ultimately. That we really need to be seen. Now, the second issue, now for the ordinary Wanainchi. Part of the reason why he appears to have been re-elected, if you ask me, outside now the Luonyanza and the Central, and Central. Kenya, where tribal motives of could have Valley, been yeah. an issue and parts of Rift Valley, is that People seem to believe that the president is focused on the job, that uh, he, he, he has an empirical mind and a scientific mind and say, these are the problems of the people. These problems can be addressed this way. Now that he has a very broad mandate, I think uh, everybody in his government, and we expect it to be high caliber government and high caliber cabinet mm. will be constituted to do a very good job that Kenyans deserve so that the economy, the benefits of the economy can trickle down to the middle class and to ordinary people. And finally, it is important. I read the NASA manifesto. Now that uh, he appears to have won, those things that uh, are in the NASA manifesto that on the face of it seems to speak to the concerns of ordinary people. There is nothing wrong about Jubilee appropriating some ah. of these good issues and implementing them. So that now you can now be able to say by the time when we are having the third elections under this constitution of Kenya 2010, mm. the idea that it's life and death who is the president of Kenya yeah, will, I know. It's will not like be there. Life and death. This so, is yes, it or... so that at that time it would be that uh, Uhuru has showed us what a good government ought to do. The idea of having a good capable, inclusive, and uh, effective government. He has to take that mandate extremely, extremely seriously. Extremely seriously for yes. the next five no. years. Uh, in 2010, and I always quote that thing, when, when uh, Yash Gai and others went around this country, the one thing if you read that report they said is that everyone felt excluded. Mm. The reality is that 17 years later, we haven't reached where we need to do. In terms of both the reality and the perception, of exclusion because there's part of exclusion that's about ex um, you know uh, perception and part of it is actually about the exclusion of the ethnic elite as opposed to the exclusion of the people generally mm -hmm. and and i think we cannot dismiss and say anyway there's nothing we can do because our politics force us to go that way we have managed to be more inclusive in the judiciary we have managed to be more inclusive in, inclusive in parliament, of course, because it's a, a whatever of elections, and on such other institutions, the, the, um, the commissions and all. We still have a significant feeling of exclusion in the executive. That needs to be done. Now, I have watched President Uhuru Kenyatta from when he was a candidate in 2002. I don't doubt that he genuinely, as a person, he gen my own perception is that he has what it takes and he has the desire to actually work to add exclusion. It's not easy, it's inclusion, sorry. It is not easy because our politics push us towards excluding. So he has a huge task of retaining his political base from wherever they voted for him. But however, working to include the even rest. those, because, because it's important for us. 
by the way, to the fullest extent possible, because some things won't be possible. But let me tell you, Linda, the other thing which we must be careful about. Mm. This is the one election that I was involved in the campaigns for a couple of my friends who are standing for politics. I came face to face with poverty in a way that I haven't. You know, we drive on the tarmac roads. And probably the only other time you get off tarmac is when you're visiting your relatives or your parents. You go around this country to the villages there where you're forced to go to look for votes. And you come face to face with poverty. You find slums in central Kenya. Slums, you know. We have a problem of poverty. And if this government or whichever government doesn't resolve that problem, it doesn't matter if we resolve the inclusion of the elite. Mm, because we can do it. that. We need to resolve that. And that responsibility is on people we don't talk about. We all sit here and talk about the president of the presidency. We have appointed 47 governors who yes. have the responsibility of water, sanitation, agriculture, health. But we, we, almost, we are saying the president, the president. The truth of the matter is that in terms of changing this country, we need to hold the county governments responsible. And finally, when we talk about exclusion and inclusion, let me tell you where a lot of exclusion is happening in the county governments. If you find the county governments where you have ethnic minorities, there's a lot of exclusion. Mm. So in a sense, as a country, we must say that we belong together. And this is not unique at the national government. You go around this country, in the NASA areas, in the Jubilee areas, you'll find a lot of exclusion at that level. So let's do two things. Let's ensure we are uplifting the living standards of our people across the board. Number two, let's preach inclusion at all levels. Wow, okay. Daisy. I think one of the things that I really must say is um, that the president must wear his victory with a lot of humility. Mm. He really must speak to the nation. And I think we saw a glimpse of that just before we went into elections when he made a, 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 an address to the nation where he talked about uh, you know, us being one people. Yeah, and, yeah. and he was speaking to the country as the president, not as the Jubilee candidate. He was speaking as the president. And he made an appeal for unity and you know, for, for us to really be able to go into the elections peacefully. Now, we need to see the same humility in victory because the truth of the matter is that we are very polarized as a country and a lot of this polarization is as a result of that exclusivity that people feel about government at all levels we have some serious problems that this country must address beyond the politicking and that's the problem that we have in this country is that we politic so much that we forget that we have real problems that must that be addressed people, yeah. and that responsibility really falls squarely ultimately on the presidency to be able, number one, to give that sense of inclusion while also ensuring that there's a harmonization of working within the national and the county governments. We have a problem of poverty, as Kamado has said. In fact, I think there was one time in the studio here, we talked about a report that was done by the, the, the um, African Women's Studies Center and Kenyan National Bureau of Statistics about food security mm -hmm. that showed 7.8 million Kenyans sleep hungry daily. We have a problem of poverty. Okay. And we all have a responsibility outside of the, the politicians. We have a responsibility as Kenyans yeah. to make a positive contribution to our country and therefore yes. even as the president makes his victory address or his acceptance speech mm. i think it's important for him to make every kenyan feel that they have not lost out on this election okay. that he will bring us together and will ensure that inclusivity is not only seen but it is felt nice that please. that growth is not just on paper we don't just have a paper growth, but a felt growth that every Kenyan feels that they are part and parcel of this. Great, Daisy. On that note, allow me to say a big thank you to all of you for being here. I'm hoping you guys can stay with us for a bit. We have a long night ahead of us. Um, and, and thank you for sharing your sentiments on what is currently going on at the Bombers of Kenya. The country waits for the IEBC to tell the country who exactly the next president is going to be. Allow me to make a clarification for the sake of our viewers who are just joining us. Um, so we've had a couple of leaders making their way to the Bombers of Kenya. Um, I'd like to let you know that Deputy President William Ruto was also there. He has since left. Um, 
several leaders are still there. And then there was also some allegation doing rounds that the NASA Tallinn Center had been attacked. It wasn't attacked. They had um, similar rumors and they decided to move the equipment from there. Our Sophia Onuna is there for us. At this point, allow me to bring in my colleagues Zubeida Kome and Ali Manzu for the Kiswahili segment of this uh, coverage, Kivumbi 2017. Zubeida Manzu, Karibu. <laughs> 